We got this tweet from Drama Alert. TikTokers are now doing abduction pranks. Are these pranks getting out of hand? Now, Drama Alert knows full well that pranks have gotten out of hand a long time ago. It's an understatement to say the least. Let's let's play the clip for you and uh, you'll see you'll, you'll see this clip and then we'll talk about YouTube pranks or TikTok pranks. So for those that are listening, you got a worker who has come to put groceries in the trunk of a car and there's a woman in the back tied up, gagged or whatever, and screaming. I'm not going to because I'm fixing to call the police. Help! Come help me now! Help! Come here! Hurry! And here come the police. Is this going too far? Asks Drama Alert. TikTok pranks. Yo, internet pranks have long gone too far. The police end up showing up and they're like, it's a prank, bro. It's a prank, bro. Yo, yo, our culture is sick, man, because this stuff is insane. I don't know how you describe it. There are people who are so desperate for any kind of acknowledgement. They'll resort to the most disgusting and vile behaviors. It's the craziest thing to me. I mean, there's varying degrees of this. You've got online grifters. You've got people of true passion. That's fine. Then you've got people who feign political opinions for clout or whatever. Then you get pranksters. You even get at the most extreme degree mass shooters, people who will go around committing atrocities because they want people to know their names. But this, this is insane. But the question, of course, is are things getting out of hand? Yo, they've been out of hand. Take a look at this. A YouTuber was shot by a man who was the target of his prank. Now, this story is actually relatively new. May 3rd, 2023. And this, you know, I, I'm going to say right here. Long story short, pranker in the mall, pranks a guy, guy shoots the prankster. The shooter is charged with felonies. I'm going to read for you the story and break down the BS, but I'm going to say this. The man who fired the shot, I believe, should be found not guilty based on what we know so far, based on the circumstances here. And the person committing the prank should be criminally charged. Now, the the dude committing the prank got shot in the abdomen, was rushed to the hospital, but he was the criminal. This is terrorism. Okay, maybe maybe it's a little bit extreme. It's it's something criminal. Maybe we shouldn't say terrorism because it's not politically motivated. But the intention of these pranksters is to shock and terrify people and to cause chaos. Here's one story. 11 year old Florida girl arrested after prank texting 911 to say her friend was kidnapped as part of a YouTube challenge. Criminal charges. Sorry. Now, look, what kind of criminal charges do you land 11 year old girl? Something light, something stupid. You make her go and clean up garbage for like a weekend or a couple things and say, don't do this. All she did was text 911. We don't want it. You got to send a message and say, like, this is what we don't tolerate. There has to be enforcement. But I want you to see this story. Take a look at this one. Dulles Town Center mall shooting case sent to grand jury. Yo, this is like one of my local malls. Although I think the Dulles Town Center mall may be the uh, let me let me let me uh, try and pull this up while I'm talking. I think this could be the mall where they play that really annoying mosquito tone, which I think is is criminal, by the way. I think it shouldn't be allowed. Is Instagram even going to load here? I posted a video about it a while ago, and I'm pretty sure it's Dulles Town Center. You walk through this mall. And it's playing an ultra high pitch squeal that only young people can hear. As you get older, your hearing starts to go. And if you're younger, you can hear the high pitch whine. It's really annoying, makes you not want to be there. And so I think what they're trying to do is stop people, uh, young people from loitering at the mall by blasting this sound. Do I have it here? No, it's not that one. It, I'm pretty sure it's Dulles Town Center. I really, really want to find this and make sure. Maybe I've gone too far. I posted on Instagram. Is this it right here? Dulles Town Center Mall. Boom. There it was. Yep. So not a fan of the mall. But anyway, here's the story. Alan W. Colley, 31, was charged with aggravated malicious wounding, use of a firearm in the commission of a felony, and discharging a firearm within a building following the April 2nd altercation in the mall's food court. They say, according to testimony, Colley was standing at the counter of a food vendor holding a bag when he was approached by Cook and another man. Cook held the phone towards Colley's face. And played the statement multiple times, like a a Google Translate statement, as Kali tried to back away. At one point, Kali pushed the phone away from him and asked him to stop. But Cook brought it back up to his face and repeated the recording. Next, a gunshot was heard. And Cook ran away from the food court and out of the mall. 
stopping on the sidewalk near Cheesecake Factory. It was there he realized he'd been shot in the chest. It was the abdomen, actually, hit him in the liver, and I think his gallbladder was removed. A responding deputy rendered first aid until an ambulance arrived. Cook underwent surgery. Kali remained on scene at the food court while the handgun was on the ground. So there's video of this. Kali immediately pushes the gun away from him and lays on the ground with, I believe, with his hands on his head. The cops come in, kick the gun away and arrest him. This guy is a was a DoorDash driver minding his own business, standing at the counter, picking up an order. This dude walks up and shoves something in his face and he swats it away and says, get back. The dude shoves it in his face again. Pop. Who was at fault? Now, I don't know the exact details. You got to watch a video footage if there is any. Maybe it was a longer altercation. Maybe the dude playing the prank was clearly just holding a phone and the guy was like, if you don't get that out of my face, I'm going to shoot you. In which case, maybe some criminal charges are warranted. Based on multiple stories that I've read, it seems this prankster walks up to the dude with the phone, puts it next to his face and the guy swats it away like, get away from me. The guy does it again and he goes, dude, bang, self-defense. No question. Sorry. I think this guy should be found not guilty based on what I've read. Granted, I don't know the full details. Innocent until proven guilty. But let me tell you something. This is how crimes are committed. Do you think that when you're being mugged, the guy walks up to you, stands five feet in front of you and says, hold it right there, sir. This here is a mugging and then pulls out a gun and says, kapow. No, two guys walk up to you. They'll hold something to your face to freak you out. They'll they'll try and grab stuff from you. This guy's in a mall and two guys, two guys walk up to him and hold something to his face. And he's supposed to know within seconds why they're doing this really weird thing. This is how they mug people. This is what they do. They come up, they distract you, they grab your stuff, shove you, and they'll run off. For all he knows, this guy was trying to hurt him. So I feel for the dude at the counter. Yo, these pranksters are out of their minds. Look at this one. This guy gets shot. This dude should be in jail. Tanner Cook should be in jail. I'm not saying he should be charged with like multiple felonies, but he should be arrested. It should not be the other guy who was the victim. Crazy to me. Spanish court. This guy put toothpaste in Oreo cookies and gave it to homeless people. That's toxic. You could kill people. These two guys made fake fake bank robbery videos. Nuts. One YouTuber, this one's silly, called 911 claiming there was a car full of Coke. Ah, it was Coca-Cola under arrest. Yo. Wasting government resource with this fake stuff. These people are are insane. Here we go. A Florida YouTuber impersonated an officer. Apparently, he'd been arrested multiple times, six different times. A New Jersey YouTuber was arrested for pulling a knife on a ShopRite employee. All of these people should be criminally charged. They should be banned from these sites instantly. That's right. I am in favor of censorship because these people are committing crimes. That's always been my standard. So here we are. Drama alert. Abduction pranks. Dude, they've been going too far. I remember uh, a while ago, you used to have you had the, you had the killer clown pranks. People would just apply clowns and they would approach people with weapons. Y'all gonna get shot, dude. Don't do that. You have these videos where people dress up in other costumes and they would jump scare people. Good way to get seriously injured. Don't do it. If I'm walking down the street, and you jump out from behind a corner and scream, you've just assaulted me. I will defend myself. And then all these people are going to be like, oh, other dudes, jump scare, it's not an attack. I am not going to be in a situation where I have to wait to figure out why someone just yelled and jumped out at me. Because it could be a mugging, it could be an attack, it could be a psychopath, or it could be a prankster. The responsibility is not mine to figure it out. You jump in my face and I perceive a threat. That's your fault. So I saw this story about this dude at the Dulles Town Center. His lawyer says there was no malice. Look at this. Adam Pulliard, the public defender's office, argued that Cook's actions were intended to cause fear and confusion among his prank targets. He is making money by causing fear in individuals, Pulliard said. He also argued Kali's response lacked elements of malice required to support the felony charges. Assistant Commonwealth Attorney Eden Holmes said Kali used incommensurate force in the altercation. They were holding cell phones, not a weapon. No way. I don't care what you're shoving in my face. It is not the fault of the victim who is being attacked and perceiving the threat. If this dude backed off right away, he'd be fine. But he advanced again. 
And at that point, it seems reasonable to me that Kali perceived a very serious threat. And why is it the victim's responsibility every time these stories happen? Now, again, just based off the reading, reading this, that's my opinion. I could be wrong. For all I know, he backed off in the prank. So was like, hey, it's a prank, bro. It's a prank, bro. And the guy's like, you're pranking me and then shot him. I don't know. This is what's being said, apparently. Now, in the in, in the story from the perspective of the guy who got shot, apparently that's the same story. That's crazy to me. This prank stuff goes too far. I think it's criminal. I think at the very least, it's criminal harassment. Why are they charging this dude? Because he had a gun. I think that's the real issue. We'll see, though, man. We'll see. I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one because this one's in my, this one's in my backyard. We go to the Dulles uh, Mall fairly often. I mean, it's, uh, it's super close to Leesburg, which is like a half hour drive from here. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 1 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.